our LPH 400 uh, paint gun in and um, we're about to go do some painting with it and uh, it was recommended by the fine folks over at Shut Your Face Garage but the crazy thing about this is I asked him like four years ago what kind of paint gun he uses what's the best one for clear and he sent me on a wild goose chase you know first he told me that he was using a DeVilbus finish line three so I went and bought that and of course I'm not getting the kind of results he's you know showing off in his videos um so then a year after that I asked him again and he said oh no no, no I'm sorry it's a DeVilbus Tecna so I bought the DeVilbus Tecna and of course I don't get the same results and I'm like man are you sure you're using the DeVilbus Tecna and He's like, man, I've, I've been using the Segola touch-up gun for all that. And so then I went and bought that. So now here it is four years later, he finally reveals the real gun, which is an Iwata LPH 400, you know? So let me fix this right here. I like to, uh, be rude to my subscribers, so I'm going to do you a disservice and put a link to this video of these guys. You know, they, they do a lot of hot rod stuff over there, you know, and kind of present this image that they're uh, 50s hot rodders, you know. Um, and um, But really, they paint uh, Prius fenders and hoods every day for a living. See you guys. All right, it has just been gorgeous in Dallas here the last couple of days. So I'm working outside. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this top sanded down. And um, I really wasn't happy with how the color of this came out. Um, I was hoping by sealing it immediately, it would preserve a lot of that sort of purplish look you get from cedar when you first, you know, mill it. But of course it didn't. Um, people pointed that out in the video. I think it was Rick Bow that pointed that out. Um, and it's turned into that sort of brownish color and it'll get more so that way so I'm gonna actually stain it I don't really like staining wood I'll just really mostly appreciate the natural look of wood but what I'm going for on this particular case um, I'm gonna stain it so just a little bit of stain so anyway I'm gonna get it sanded and um, I really didn't do that great of a job picking out the boards you know a lot of them have just random crap cracks in them stuff like that but maybe it'll add to the appeal of it it's Thursday morning and I've got a little piece of sheet metal on the table here getting ready to cut this out <clears throat> and this is gonna be a flag for David a um, it's gonna come out to be about 24 inches long and then <clears throat> by the time it gets the bends in it <clears throat> it's closer to it's closer to about 22 inches or so and it's about 15 inches this way and i sell those on my website for 195 for plus shipping and for guys that are watching the channel you know i'll do them for 150 um or 175 including shipping so if anybody else is interested in one of these little flags for their shop you know let me know i'll, I'll make you one this actually is my only revenue producing job for this whole week um the rest of the week I've been working on the table, just about got it ready. I'm not going to show it yet. It's looking pretty good. Those of you that are on, follow me on Instagram or Facebook have already seen it. And uh, if you're not already following me on Instagram, it's at Ramsey Customs. Be sure to do that. You'll get more advanced looks at what we're working on. But I pretty much show most everything here. But I'll have a you know a larger video on the Turbo Cobra channel on the table here in the next oh, a couple days. I should have everything I need to get that produced, and that's going to become a kit with plans, things like that. So hopefully that'll generate some revenue for me. So anyway, uh, I spent a little bit of time on the table, and somebody asked. You know, did I check the rollers, the V rollers, are those clean? I did, I have checked them before, just kind of did a quick look and they, they were clean and then I just, I just stuck a piece of scotch right on there and jogged the gantry um, and, you know, kind of cleaned it and then I cleaned the rail. Um, but there's also, you know, that bottom flat bearing there that rides on a little uh, eighth inch piece, you know, strip that this is mounted to. 
and this had some it actually still does a few rough places there's one right there for sure and I just filed the entire bottom of it just kind of went over it with a file um, and so I may just I may need to spend some time and really go you know I think there's some powder coat on it in some places and just some edges that are a little bit rough so that might be an opportunity for me there but uh, anyway we're all set up here um, and change the tips out you can see I've been collecting consumables um, so can't have too many of those I sh that should be enough to last me quite a while now but we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this going this is the program updated American flag 24 inch and I just actually made some more changes to the cam on it. We're running it, we're gonna to try to run this at 200 inches a minute here. And um, I've got a variable set to cut the stars and the outer edges where it has all the tears in it to cut that at 30%. And then all the straightaways should cut at 200 inches per minute. And then the, uh, the tight spot should cut at 30% of that, which would be uh, 70 inches a minute somewhere in that range so well let's see what happens It is Thursday evening and this is David's flag. Got it all cut out and prepped. And I've sprayed the adhesion promoter on it. So we'll come back and mask off the stripes and do the stars in the candy blue. Let that set up for a couple hours and then reverse mask it. Mask off all the stripes and get her painted. And then here is the one that is going to A-Bomb 79. And I wasn't really happy with uh, you know how much texture it had huh. and um, so I wet sanded it I'm gonna come back and re-clear it I bought some different clear and I've also got another gun I'm gonna use I'll go open that up and show it to you so this is all wet sanded down and 600 grit ready to be re-cleared and there was a, a run or a sag starting to develop right in here I was able to get that out um, and you can see how much texture it had in it where I didn't really sand it that good out there on the tips because it's just flimsy and so um, but the areas that was real heavy you know I got it fairly flat I think it's really just um, the adhesion promoter that I sprayed out of the rattle can is what created that texture underneath and that just kept building as I built up so it's unfortunately going to still probably have that textured look because it's flat. You can see from that angle, but you can see in there it's all textured up. So it's going to be what it's going to be. All right, so we got to use the Supernova or the uh, LPH 400 for the first time last night. We're going to go ahead and get it put it back together here. Uh, took it apart, cleaned it, got the part soaking in lacquer thinner overnight and that's the wrong tip I got two different guns I use so they're both in there put the tip back in I noticed when I got this gun that tip was in there really tight I mean it was super snug so I don't know if that was by design or what but we're gonna snug it back down guys that don't paint this is the, the fluid tip this is the needle it goes in from the back 
you really always want to put your fluid tip in first so that you're not screwing in and, and screwing against the uh, needle and wearing it out so the spring and knob goes on. And that becomes your fluid control. So fluid control, fan pattern, and air control. So screw that back in a little bit. And we got the one with the orange air cap. I was pretty pleased with it. So fluid tip, needle, air cap, and the cup. This is the next morning after the paint job. We'll go take a look at it. I might have been off camera there. Hopefully I wouldn't. Thirty-four degrees in here this morning. So here's David's twenty-four inch flag. And man, I gotta say, it just the clear is laid out as about as nice and perfect as you can get it. It's got three coats on it. I used a 120 grit to create a little more pronounced um, patterns in it, and and it looks cool. It really shows up good, um, but you have to put more clear on it, you know, to kind of level it out because it did create some indentions. And then here's the A bomb 79 flag. And I, I don't know why this one picked up. A little bit more trash than the small one. Of course, it's going to be a bigger flag, and you're going to have that. But um, that's a 44-inch wide flag. So if you guys want one of these killer flags, man, let me know. I'll hook you up. I'm cutting guys some good deals on them just to keep myself busy.